To follow up on the introduction to relative gain arrays that I introduced previously, um, I'd like to go back to the 2x2 two two MIMO model that we discussed at steady state. And as we'll recall, we, um, the 2x2 two two MIMO will have the form um, where we multiply um, our input vector by this transfer function matrix uh, to evaluate what our input, how our outputs will respond. And at steady state, um, when we let s equal zero in all of these transfer functions, um, we can evaluate this here, which is referred to as g0, which is our steady state uh, transfer function matrix. And so with this steady state transfer function matrix, we can evaluate our relative gain array very quickly. And the way we do that, now that we've understood the principles behind it, uh, is pretty straightforward. And so the first thing we'll do is um, we're going to evaluate uh, the inverse of this steady state transfer function matrix and then take the transpose of it. And what we'll find is that lambda, our RGA uh, array, is equivalent to G0, the steady state gain array. And then I'm going to write this notation dot times so element by element multiplication of the inverse of your relative uh, of your steady state gain array transpose. And so to clarify and uh, elaborate, um, what I will do next is say, um, suppose we take, to keep things generic, the inverse of this matrix, and we can be dealing with any dimension, uh, we can only uh, be dealing with square matrices to by the invertible matrix theorem. Um, so in this case, if we were working with a three by three matrix, um, you know, these uh, elements will get very long and tedious. So um, to keep things easy to follow, what I'll say is um, we're going to let G inverse zero, so the inverse of your steady state gain matrix, be equivalent to X11, X12, X21, X22, where these are all um, condensed variable names for what we would find um, in our matrix. And so if we take the transpose of G inverse naught, G inverse evaluated at S equals zero, transpose will be equivalent to switching elements I and J uh, in this transfer function. So what this will be equivalent to is x11 because we're swapping one and one, um, x21, x12, x22. And so if you had a three by three or four by four or any square matrix, um, you would apply this rule. And so now what we can do is we can evaluate our relative gain array uh, very easily. Uh, and so it'll be equivalent to, we will have k11, k12, k21, k22 times x11. Um, I'm sorry, so I need to include this special notation because we are doing um, a uh, element by element multiplication. So x11, x12, x21, x22. Our relative gain array will now be k11, x11, k12, x21, k21, x12, and k22, x22. And so this is a very quick way that allows us to evaluate what our relative gain array is when we're dealing with square matrices and we can invert it like this. Um, and uh, once we uh, have reached this point, we can now ask ourselves uh, how to uh, pair our inputs and outputs. And so um, to go over a quick example uh, and go into a little bit more detail on that, uh, let's say we evaluated uh, a matrix and we ended up finding that uh, we got these values. So we got minus 0 0.8, 1.8, 1.8, and minus 0 0.8. And so the question to ask here is, which one of these terms do we go with? Because um, both these terms, minus 0.8 and 1.8, are equidistant from 1, but um, it is very, it is, um, you will introduce instability into your controller if 
you choose negative uh, values or if, if we have a negative gain. And so um, what we'll do, and if we take a little bit of a step back here, um, also recognize that each row corresponds to uh, an output and each column corresponds to um, that input. And so uh, if you're evaluating this uh, on a test, for instance, or in real life, why not? Um, what you'll find in this case is you'll scan through row one and you'll pick Y1 to be associated with whichever element in this row has a positive value that is closest to one. And so in that case, we'll see how U2 or our second column uh, has 1.8, which is our closest positive value to one. And so in this case, um, we will pair Y1 with U2 and Y2 with U1. And so um, just to elaborate a little bit more on that as well, uh, what this means is that if we were building a controller, um, if we had a perturbation in input one, um, we would want that controller detecting that error in input one to manipulate very um, our input two, not input one, um, in order to um, respond to that disturbance as uh, with the highest degree of performance and robustness possible. And so um, this is what we get from the relative gain array. Let me know if you guys have any questions and thanks for watching.